If you're a woodworker and you've ever done inlay or marquetry, then you know what a pain it is to try and get all of those cuts just precise and perfect so that they all fit together seamlessly. Well, in this episode, I'm going to do that with a laser and you'll find out that you don't actually even have to be a woodworker to make this happen. So stick around. Hello again, I'm Steve and I make everything and welcome back to my shop. You probably don't know, but in the past I've done quite a bit of basic woodworking, I have bowl turning, making shelves, bookcases, you name it. But one of the things I haven't done, at least not very well, is proper inlay or marquetry if you're a little more refined. So what I thought I would do is attempt to use my laser to make me a craftsman of inlay and I thought it would be a good video to kind of walk through and start from something really basic an image I pulled off of Google uh, just to try it and see see what we produce and along the way talk about a few of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way so let's get started with that so I moved over to Inkscape and I preloaded this image it's believe it or not a rose with a couple of leaves on either side and then I drew a box around it. The, it isn't the best inlay uh, representation, but it, it has a lot of nice interesting pieces to cut, so it's a good demonstration piece, uh, and uh, we'll use it. What we'll do uh, when we actually cut it out is we'll do the leaves in uh, one color, probably walnut, and the rose itself in cherry, and I may even try acrylic at some point. It, it doesn't really matter what the inner material is because this will work for just about anything. That's the nice thing about lasers. Now, also, I'm not going to use veneer when I, when I work on this. Uh, you could, but then there's a lot of calculation to get the depth of these, these inserts correct. And I just didn't want to take time because that doesn't really add value to the, to the image or to the, the video here. So uh, we'll just kind of skip through that. So what I have here is the background and normally what you would do is you would just cut this exactly the way it is and that's the, we'll call it the frame where all of these little pieces will get inserted. But we have to keep in mind when you cut with a laser, it's just like a saw, there's a bit of a kerf. So you can't just then cut out the single pieces. Well, you could, but you wouldn't get a nice fit. And we're really trying to get a, a really nice tight fit around these you have to know the width of the kerf on your laser, and I predetermined mine. And I'll show you a couple of little tricks to make this happen as a result of that. And I'll also kind of show you what you need to do to uh, to figure out what your kerf is, uh, because it will be different for every laser. I can't even say all Muse lasers are this, and all Glowforge lasers are are you know the kerf is this big. So you just have to kind of kind of experiment. But it it really isn't that hard, and I'll show you how to do it. I've actually already done this, but I'll show you how I made this happen. So these are the, the background images, and I grouped the leaves, two sets of leaves together, and the rose petals themselves together. And we'll work on them one at a time. And the reason I did this is because you might want to print or uh, laser cut these separately uh, to save material. There's no point in wasting all this, this space in between. So that's why I did that. Now we're going to use a couple of interesting tools in Inkscape. So I have this image selected and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool called the linked offset tool and you'll see it drew this nice little dot up here and if I grab this and and now expand it out you'll see what it what it does and let me zoom in because it's trying to do a bunch of averaging here and we really only want a small piece and notice I didn't have to copy anything this linked offset tool does a copy of the object that you've selected. Now what I have is this gap in the middle and this is really what the kerf is. So I happen to know that the kerf in my laser is about 0.4 millimeters all around. So the trick I'm going to use here is what I'll do, as usual all of my lines in this diagram are 0.125 millimeters. They can be anything just to be clear but but I make them this size. So if I, if I know that my kerf is 0.44 millimeters, I can just set this line thickness to this, and you'll see it got, it got fat. Now this is really what the outline plus the kerf would look like. 
And all I'm really going to do to, to make this happen is I'm just going to drag this back down to just until it's touching the, the edge of this original line. And so now we have two lines. And what I'll do now is I'll turn this line back into its original thickness. And you'll see we have the actual kerf in between. What I can do as a result of this is I can cut, if I put these on another layer, and I already have and I'll show you in a second. If I put this on another layer, the outer piece, that is the, the outline for the piece we're going to insert, and then the inside is the, is the outline for the hole that it's gonna go into. And it, it's weird that it's bigger, but it's bigger because this much of it will get cut off by the laser in the, in, as a kerf. So uh, I'll just undo this and I'll show you what I, what I did to make, to make all of this happen. And if I turn on the layer that I did, you can see that all of the, all of the objects in the, in the drawing have that shape. And if I turn off the background, you'll see just these are the pieces that the inserts and the, this is the outline of the holes. So with that, I can just dump all this to the laser. We can turn both of these on actually if we want, but these are all gonna be different materials. So I'll do them in two pieces and I'll just export. This is the background as a PDF because that will all be one piece. And then I'll export the inserts as a separate PDF uh, just to make it easier. So I'll show you that in a, in when we go over to the laser. So I flipped over to RE3, the laser software, and I actually lied to you. I exported this all as a single file, so everything is in one PDF. And the first thing we're going to laser cut is the outline and with all the holes in it for the inserts. So I'm going to turn off those outline pieces, and you can see what's left is, is the actual size of, or shape of the board that we're going to put it into, and then all of the holes will be there. Now, what I'll do after is I will turn off all of the rows pieces and I'll just cut a single piece the size of our work and we'll use that as the backer. So we'll sandwich, we'll sandwich this piece with the holes in it along with the backer and, and uh, we'll create a thicker piece, but it'll give us a place to do our inserts for all of our, our wood pieces here. So I'll, I'll get that la uh, the laser going and we'll print the outline piece in just Baltic birch, just something basic, plywood, and then the leaves will, I'll, I have some walnut that I can use, and for the rose we'll use something lighter like a cherry. Uh, we could also use acrylic, if, uh, if I had some red acrylic here I'd, I'd put something together, but I don't have any handy, so, um, so we'll save that for another time. And with that we can get the laser job going. So I'm back in RE3 for a second and I'm selecting the petals for the rows. Now when you laser cut the kerf isn't a, it's not like a regular saw blade where the walls of the kerf are perfectly vertical and the reason for that is because the laser is actually focusing down to a point so the edges of the of, of the holes are actually kind of tapered. Now if I cut this this way the pieces like the uh, like the hole will be will be wider at the top so and that, that'll make things hard to put together so what I'm going to do is is flip this in reverse so that when when I cut this the the taper on the on the rose petals is the opposite direction and that will make things a little easier when we assemble uh, and the joints will be, you know, very nice and tight. So I'll do that uh, and we'll come back with the pieces.
Okay, so we're ready to glue up our inlay now, and we have everything we need. We have some basic white glue, a couple of clamps to clamp it all down, a bit of a stick to stir it, or to sp spread out the glue, and our pieces. And the first thing we're going to do is glue these two pieces together, which will form the basis for our inlay. So, I'll just grab a bit of glue, and spread it on. We want a nice a nice even coat here so we can be liberal because we're going to wipe most of this off anyway if it if it spreads out over the over the edges but we want to make sure we get well into the center here as well because that's where the inlay will will, will be glued so just spread that out in a relatively thick layer we may add some more glue here. It's actually not too bad. So that'll be that'll be good. And we want to make sure we get the right side for our our rows here and so and now we can just it's kind of like building a puzzle actually so we can just grab pieces one at a time and set them in and you'll see they fight fit tight but not too tight because the edges here the outline of the rose is actually really really thin so we can't afford any any real pressure on it okay just something to just kind of tap these down a bit. Just to make sure they're seated. And, and there we have it. All that's left, we'll clamp it down. And uh, in an hour or two, once the glue sets, we'll give it a bit of a sand and we're pretty much finished. Maybe a couple coats of, of clear coat. So I popped the glue clamps off and now I need to sand the uh, surface so that all of the inlay pieces uh, come out perfectly smooth with the base. And I'll show you the video up here. I just took my palm sander with 340 grit. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be super smooth, but if you really are looking for that glass finish, you could then follow that up with like a 600 grit or something or 480, something in between. And uh, then I took uh, just some spray clear coat satin finish, which I'll show you up here, and two coats of that sanding uh, with 600 grit in between, and uh, it came out beautiful. It's it's uh, you know much better than I expected. It certainly made a craftsman out of a hack like me, which is beyond what I expected. Uh, and with that, I'll quickly show you the finished product, and uh, hopefully, you know, it, you you like what you see there. And here's our finished product, and you can see, if I can zoom zoom it in here, you can see the pieces fit in very, very well. And don't worry about the finish here. I really didn't take that much time, but I mean, these are, you would be very hard to do that better by hand. And I know there are craftsmen out there who could, but uh, <laughs> for someone who's, uh, you know, not an expert in inlay, you know, I am more than happy with this. So there we go. We're, we're finished. It's, it looks awesome. And it's something I plan to use in future projects. So that was the finished project. It worked out really well. And hopefully you got some uh, knowledge out of this video. Uh, certainly there's a couple of key tips in here uh, that uh, will help you get really seamless joints when you're putting inlay together 
And uh, as always, uh, I'll post a video over on the side here that uh, might be helpful for anything else you're trying to learn. Uh, go ahead and watch that if you're interested. And if you are, I'll see you over there. As always, you can use my coupon code if you're interested in an FSL laser. If you're not and a Glowforge works for you, then by all means, go buy one of those. But this way, you can, if you do buy an FSL laser, you can save yourself $125. Um, certainly subscribe to the channel and uh, I'm happy to have you here. We're building a community of like-minded people who want to help each other. And with that, uh, go make your world and I'll see you next time.